Good morning, ESM. I'm Maddie. And I'm Ellie. The CDC recently declared mental health as a major priority to the youth of America. We will focus on that after announcements. The weight room will be open during February break on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 to 9 a.m. See Mr. Eschbacher if you have any questions. ESM's movie night is tonight. The first show is in Kanto at 6 at 6 p.m. and Chang Chi at 8.30 p.m. Tickets will be available online for $4 and then at the door for $6. Scan the QR code on screen now for more information. Spartan of the Quarter winners for marking period two are as followed. Grade nine, Michael Saunders. Grade 10, Shayla Sanson. Uh, grade 11, Robert Holloway. And grade 12, Michael Parks. Student Council, Council is teaming up with the Syracuse Crunch in our latest fundraiser efforts. Half of the proceeds for each sale will go to ESM Student Council and school community. If interest in purchasing tickets to Syracuse Crunch home game, see Ms. Hart and Ms. Hen Mr. Hart and Ms. Henrich. Flyers will be available in room G17. And I'm Nolan with announcements. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In 2016, 16.5 of U.S. youth ages 6 to 17 experienced a mental health disorder. This is equivalent to 7.7 .7 million people. Mental health has been an ongoing issue in our world. Many struggle with issues such as anxiety, depression, OCD, and ADHD. According to Mrs. Montroy, our school social worker, all counselors work together. The counselors and psychologists and I work very closely together. So if students come to the counselors with concerns that maybe they can't necessarily address or they feel like it's more of a mental health related concern, they would definitely refer that student to me. Um, also, if students come to me about grades or credits or you know applications for college or something like that, Oftentimes, I'll direct them to their school counselor, but we definitely overlap and sometimes we meet with students together to address their concerns. She went on to add that there are many different types of issues affecting students. I think the biggest triggers right now are academic stressors, um, definitely could be job related concerns, um, over scheduling ourselves. So sometimes students are over scheduling themselves and having jobs and getting involved in school-related activities after school and making sure that their academics are being adhered to. Um, I definitely think some stressors include like moving from school district to school district, making moves between houses, um, if there's domestic violence in the home, if there's poverty in the home, even the pandemic has caused a lot of stressors. Mrs. Montre advises that when someone feels stressed, there's some ways to cope. Self-soothe skill is a really important one. So when kids feel anxiety, I always encourage them to think about their five senses. What is something in the moment that they can see that they it, that's self-soothing to them? So it could be a picture on their phone of a friend, of a parent, of someone that's really close to them. It could be for a minute, I have to pull out something from my book bag, whether it's a magazine and I look at something that's really soothing to me. Um, it could be appealing to like your hearing sense, right? So listening to music, if you have the opportunity to do that. Um, it could be pulling out a peppermint candy to refocus your mind on something. So you're tasting something different or taking a drink of water. Or even you had mentioned here in my office, I have some squishmallows, you know, holding on to something, touching something that can kind of self-regulate your body. Um, but what I would say is if that doesn't work, definitely getting to a trusted adult to work through maybe more of those self-soothe skills or maybe some other coping strategies that will help reduce that anxiety. Yeah. And how do you think teachers can be more open-minded in that? I know I personally like to have something in my hands to play with just to keep myself focused and or just to take some calm breaths, to, some deep breaths to calm myself down. I typically like to put headphones in and listen to music. I also like to hang out in my room alone when I feel stressed. Mr. Robinson, one of our school counselors, discussed the, vari the various trends that he saw within our school. What we're seeing is a, is a significant increase in, in grief anxiety and depression in students. Um, we always have to be cognizant of the fact that we here at ESM have students who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID. And it's something that's ongoing. Grief is a, is a process for all of us. Um, and to be sensitive to, to those students and everyone is important. Um, but the depression and anxiety are things that um, have increased tremendously as a result of isolation and other things that have um, come about because of the pandemic. He then went on to say how this built up and now 
now that we are halfway through the year? Left. Um, so the academic tensions might be increasing. Seniors certainly um, are realizing that they have less than five months left of high school. And, and um, you know, those are all things that play into the stress levels of students in a normal year. So when you combine those normal stresses with everything that we're dealing with um, now, that's naturally gonna, gonna be difficult for people to handle and, and to cope with, so. Looking at not just our school, but those throughout our county, we had the pleasure to talk to Mr. William DeSantis from Commu Contact Community Service, where he is in charge of suicide safety and mental health, ed and mental health education. He provides support to stu students, staff, and family, not just here, but throughout Onondaga County. Right, well, it, exactly. In order to look at uh, mental health in this year, we really do have to take into account the previous two years and kind of the cycle of stress. And I think right now high school students um, have, you know, a high saturation of stress. You know, they're, they're looking at colleges, they're involved in sports, they're, there's a lot of stress in the environment. And I think one trend we're noticing is, um, you know, students are really kind of supporting one another in a lot of ways with mental health. And that's great. We just want to be able to equip them with the tools to be able to do so and get somebody help because a lot of times, you know, we, we encounter things that we can't necessarily handle all on our own. Identify, identifying what someone who is suffering from a mental health crisis looks like can be tricky. However, Mr. DeSantis keyed on a few warning signs. That's really complicated because if I were to say, what does somebody who's experiencing a mental health related issue look like? They look like everybody else. However, in terms of warning signs, right, somebody may feel you're noticing they're sleeping too much or too little, they're uncomfortable, they're self-isolating, right? So it's a person that maybe ordinarily enjoys being around other people, um, no longer feels that way and kind of just wants to be alone. Um, you know, any feeling of hopelessness or helplessness is, is definitely a, a warning sign. Um, you know, be aware if something, you know, feels like it may be a problem. So if somebody has severe allergies, they're not gonna ignore that. Um, if it's interfering with their work um, and they're having symptoms of it, they're gonna seek treatment. And I think one you know, really important thing to, to notice is if I feel you know, that I'm experiencing things that are interfering, you know, I'm having some difficult thoughts, I'm having difficulty, I'm experiencing anxiety or depression, really seeking that safe adult, that trusted adult, and opening up about what's going on. Especially after, after the pandemic, more and more teens are struggling with mental health. In fact, 30% of teens are suffering from depression and 31% have some type of anxiety disorder. Contact Community Service is a great outreach program. To contact them, you can call 305-251-1400. Oakland Hills Country Club's clubhouse burned down yesterday. The damage to the building was said to be extensive and maybe irreparable. The club dates back to 1922, 100 years ago, and is the site of many famous golf tournaments. The Syracuse men's basketball team has a game against Boston College on Saturday. And on Sunday, the men's lacrosse team ranked ninth in the country faces number one ranked Maryland. And the women's lacrosse team ranked third in the country will face fourth ranked Stony Brook on Sunday. In upcoming games, boys basketball has their first sectional game against Auburn at 6, and girls basketball has an away game at Camden at 6.30. And I'm Tanner with your sports. for you guys to cope is writing in a journal, exercises whether that's physical stuff like working out or mental things like just taking some deep breaths. Also make sure you take time for self-care. Have a resource outlet that you can talk to while in crisis and keep yourself as busy as possible. 
Most importantly, reach out to an, a trusted adult for help. Once again, thank you, Mr. DeSantis. I think we're at a point now we're starting to see the sun is out a little more, the days are starting to get a little bit longer, and, and we really can look forward and see kind of the, the finish line in sight. And I think that we're, we've pulled through together um, and things are really heading in a, in a great direction.